G'day makers. These feathers are fake. I 3D printed them and I'm really excited about this technique because it means I can make fantasy feathers of any colour or texture or size and they'll look quite realistic. I'm thinking they'd be really cool on great big hats or giant cosplay wings or costumes and capelets or creature puppets, anything we can dream up really. And they're shockingly easy to make. It's just a little slicer trick. Basically, each feather is made up of two 3D models and they're printed overlapping each other and they each have a different fill line direction so that either side of the vein branches from the shaft. It honestly sounds harder than it is, so let me show you how I did it. I first modeled these feathers in Fusion 360 so the veins would be two layers high so that we get nice full feathers. I also made a shaft for them and attached that to one half of the feather. Then I brought them into Cura and in the materials section I set the top slash bottom and top surface skin flow to 50%. You might want to vary this depending on your filament and temperature. In the infill section I changed the infill overlap percentage to 30%. What this setting does is make the fill lines overlap the wall just a little bit more and this is to compensate for the lowered flow. It basically ensures the feathery bits of the vein stay attached to the shaft. Then, to get the feathery bits to go in the right direction, we change the top slash bottom line direction to 45 degrees in these square brackets. This is actually a really cool setting. You can write a list of angles in here that it will cycle through layer per layer. Though, we're just using five for this example because we want them all to go in the same direction. Now, if we slice it, we can see that one half of the feather looks good but we need to change the angle of the lines on the other side of the vein without it affecting this side. So it's time for the cool bit. We're going to be using per model settings. Through these, we can change almost any setting about an object, meaning you can have different objects with different settings on the same build plate. So we want to click on the model we want to alter and then select settings. Then we just need to add the top slash bottom line direction settings and set that to negative 45, which will be opposite the 45 on our existing side. Then I move them together so the walls are overlapping underneath the shaft and it looked all tidy, so I printed a bunch out. Once they're printed, all you need to do is trim off the outer wall to release the feathery bits. Then you can shape them by hand, just like with real feathers. I sewed a few together to make this little fascinator, which really just makes me feel like a cockatoo. <laughs> I'm really excited about this technique because I studied millinery back in the day, so hat making, and I really loved working with feathers. As a medium, they're really cool and you can do a lot with them. But I haven't bought feathers for a really long time because I learned that the feather trade has really similar ethical concerns to the fur trade. But this method allows me to make feathers free from cruelty and to any size or colour or style that I want. So I'm really excited. I'm also excited because a very clever friend of mine has reached out to ask if we can collaborate on a project using these feathers. David Shorey, the brilliance behind these gorgeous 3D printed fabric designs and many other fantastic works, has some really cool ideas about how we can combine these feathers with his designs, so I'm really keen to see where we end up together. I'm also keen to see what everyone else does with these. Make some giant cosplay wings or a fancy fascinator for the races, and please 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 tag me because I love seeing what people do. <laughs> All my socials are in the description. As always, a huge, huge thank you to all my patrons, and particularly my top supporters in this list of legends. You are absolutely awesome. Thank you everyone who is helping me to keep on making this content. YouTube still isn't paying me anything, so Patreon really helps. And if David's work has piqued your interest earlier, I actually did an interview with him recently, which you can find here. It's full to the brim of his absolutely astounding works across an incredibly diverse range of topics, from Arduino to AI to these gorgeous fabric prints. Plus, here's a video YouTube thinks you might like. Thank you for joining. See you later. <laughs>